Hi guys, greetings of the day. Uh, myself, Professor Vijay Tarwardhan. Please welcome back to my YouTube channel to learn the subject called as Engineering Graphics. And in this today's session, let me show you how to do the manual drawing for the projection of solids for an example problem, which is like this. A square pyramid 35 millimeter sides of base and 60 millimeter axis length rests on HP on one of its corners of the base, such that the two base edges containing the corner on which it rests make equal inclination with HP. Draw the projections of the pyramid when the axis of the pyramid is inclined to HP at 40 degree and VP at 30 degree. Now let me show you the actual representation of the problem first. Yes guys, now you can see this is the actual representation of a square pyramid since the base shape is square that's why it is called a square pyramid and in the question it is clearly given as 35 mm sides and the height of the solid is uh, 35 mm, sorry 60 millimeter and how to locate it we have to locate the solid like this it is resting on one of its corners on hp when it is inclined to hp at 10 40 degree this is how it is going to look like in second stage front view and the third stage front view is going to look like this that is when the axis is inclined to vp at an angle of 30 degree now in the initial construction while you are going to construct it now you can see there are two lateral surfaces one and two lateral surfaces can be seen in the front view now the front view of the pyramid is always going to be the triangle but in case of a prisms it is going to be the rectangle please do remember this point which is very important now let me show you how to do it in your booklets properly. Now to solve a problem in your grid box, now using your 2H pencils, let me show you how to draw the corner resting square. Now draw a constructional line which is perpendicular to XY line which is as shown in the figure like this. Then using the same pencil, locate a point anywhere on this line over here. Now let me locate a point. And after locating a point, Keep your protractor at this point and measure 45 degree in both the direction that is in the clockwise direction as well as in the anti-clockwise direction one has to draw the lines. Now you can see uh, when you are going to measure this uh, line with respect to the perpendicular line with respect to xy what we have drawn it should measure 45 degree and to get the proper square using the compass measure three and a half boxes and draw an arc like this and without changing the radius and the center draw an arc at the bottom side of the line what we have constructed and again keeping at the bottom again without changing the radius draw a constructional arc like this which is as shown and again keeping the point on this uh, center over there again draw one more arc like this now using your hb pencils one can connect all the intersection point of the corners like this now you can see this is how we are going to get the required corner resting square construction now once you got this corner resting square construction since we are dealing with the pyramid the slant edges of the pyramid is always going to be the completely visible henceforth make sure that these two slant edges sorry four slant edges that is nothing but the two diagonals should be represented as a dark line now after which we have to complete the annotation part dimensioning part and drawing the projectors to draw the front view now you guys can see that i have completed the annotation part and naming part and also drawn the projectors and represented the bottom case and after which we know that to complete the front view we know that this height of the axis is uh, 60 millimeter which is given in the question so for which one has to complete that portion that is identify the apex position sorry axis position from there measure six boxes vertically in the form of a chain line like this and after which now one can see that this point is going to represent the apex position o dash now let me complete the front view now upon completing the front view the base has to be completed properly and then the boundary lines is going to be connected as a triangle like this because the front view of a pyramid is always a triangle and after which according to the uh, observation and the wheels or rules of visibility the axis line is going to be behind the visible slant edge OB henceforth the OB is supposed to be shown as a dark line like this now one can say that the first stage is completed in all aspects but that you have to show the 
size of the uh, solid as uh, that is uh, the height as 60 millimeter like this. So one can say that the front view is completed in all aspects. Now you guys can see that uh, in the question it is clearly mentioned that the axis of the pyramid is inclined to HP at 40 degrees. So according to which we have to rotate the solid in the clockwise direction. Upon in the clockwise direction the resting corner will become C dash and the base inclination is supposed to be inclined at an angle of 90 minus theta and the theta value that is with respect to HP inclination is given as 40 degree. Hence the base is supposed to be rotated at an angle of 50 degree. Now well, let me show you how to do the same. Now you guys can see that uh, since we have decided to rotate the solid in the clockwise direction, the C dash is going to be the resting corner. From C dash, we are supposed to rotate this base at an angle of 50 degree in the clock anti-clockwise direction. Now upon which, so we are going to draw a constructional line like this. That is, uh, keep the protractor at corner C dash. Now from the C dash, you are supposed to draw a constructional line like this at an angle of 50 degree in the clockwise direction. Then the axis will be inclined to HP at an angle of 40 degree. Now to get the position of O dash and C dash uh, and A dash, what are the things we have to do is take the compass, measure the distance from C dash to A dash. With the compass, measure the distance from C dash to A dash using the compass. Now that has the center, that is C dash as the center and without changing the radius, draw a constructional arc over here, which is going to represent the corner A dash. Now you can mark this corner as A dash and to get the position of O dash, now using the same compass, now measure the radius from O dash to C dash, which is also equal to O dash to A dash. O dash to C dash and which is also equal to O dash to A dash, which has to be measured. Now with C dash as the center, without changing the radius, we are supposed to draw a constructional arc like this. And with the A dash also, without changing the radius, we are supposed to draw one more arc like this. Now the intersection point is going to get the corner, sorry, the apex O dash. Now let me complete it and show it to you guys. Now you guys can see that I have completed the uh, reconstruction of second stage but here in the question it is clearly mentioned that the axis is inclined to HP so that's why extend this axis line with respect to the XY line like this which is keeping the scale parallel to the one line and then show that the axis inclination has 40 degree in your booklet and then to get the top view one has to draw the projector from the corner sorry the apex O dash like this. Now upon drawing the O dash like this and you have to draw the top view from this stage also O dash over here then locate a point. Now in the same fashion we are supposed to draw all the projectors. Now I'm going to complete it and show it to you guys to save the time. Now you guys can see that I have completed the drawing the projectors of both the uh, top and front views of the particular stages and obtain the respective corners of ABCD and apex position O and O1. Now, according to the rules of uh, visibility, boundary lines are always visible. Now, let us identify the boundary. The boundary is going to be A to B, B to O, O to C and C to A. And after which we have to identify according to the second point, the base is visible or not. When the object is observed from the top, the base is invisible from the top. Henceforth, the base edges must be invisible edges. Using your HB pencils, connect CD as well as DB as the invisible base edges. And however, AC and AB forms the boundary. Even though it is invisible, it should be always visible. Now, according to the third point, the slant edges which are passing inside the invisible base are visible. Henceforth, the slant edge AO is going to be visible. However, OD is going to be the invisible. Even though OD, if you are going to show it as invisible, it is going to be overlapped with line OA. Hence, even though if you have shown it, it is not going to be an important thing here. Now, this completes the second stage front end top use as per the given condition. Now, 
the axis is inclined to HP at 40 degree is finished and VP at 30 degree is given. This is nothing but the true angle. Now we are supposed to complete the true angle. Now to draw the true angle, now we are going to draw a constructional line which is passing parallel to the XY line keeping one boxes below the XY line to make sure that the solid should not cross the XY line or should not come out of the box. In keeping that thing in the manner, I'm going to draw this line and then draw a 30 degree line which is starting from one of the corner or else you can locate a point anywhere and draw the 30 degree line. And then show that this true inclination is 30 degree. Now, you can see that when we are going to measure the distance from axis to axis, that is the length of axis if I am going to measure, it is getting reduced. The true length of the axis is 60 millimeter, the apparent length of the axis is less than 60 millimeter. Now what we should do, let me tell you. Now in your booklet, take a pencil, locate a point anywhere on the 30 degree line what we have obtained, okay. Once we draw a 30 degree of our uh, point on a 30 degree line, that will be marked as the axis start point O1, which is nothing but here. Now, the true length of the axis is measuring as six boxes. That we have to do it using the compass. Now, take the compass, measure the true length of the axis. Now, taking the true length of the axis, keeping in keeping it at the O1 as the center, and now we are supposed to draw a constructional arc over there. And after drawing a constructional arc, then wherever the arc and this 30 degree line meets, we are supposed to draw the locus of a line. Now on this locus, we are going to get the apparent length, which is going to be produced. Now how to get that apparent length? Again, using the compass, measure the apparent length of the axis. The apparent length of the axis, that is O1 to O is supposed to be measured. Okay, using this dimension, that is with O1 as the center and without changing the radius, what we have measured, draw a constructional arc over here. And now this point is going to be marked as the apparent point of O. Now, using your pencil, you can connect the line O to O1 and this can be extended till the a constructional line what we have drawn like this and then measure this angle which angle is this angle which is called as the apparent angle this angle is going to be called as apparent angle which is measuring as 41 degree now after which we have to locate the corners a c d b now let me show you how to do this here now using the arc technique measure the distance from O1 to C. Measure the distance from O1 to C with O1 as the center without changing the radius. Now let me draw a constructional arc like this. Now measure the distance from O to C using O to C as a reference with O what we have got without changing the radius. One has to draw a constructional line like this. Sorry, the arc. Now the intersection is going to be marked as the corner C in the same fashion. Let me complete the complete annotation and let me complete the actual top view and show you to you guys to save the time over here. Now you guys can see that I have completed the second stage top view according to the third stage at an angle of beta. And after which we have to get the front view for which we have to draw the projectors from each and every stages. Now let me show you one of the projectors which is drawing from O and the horizontal projector from O has to be drawn like this. Now the intersection point of these two points what we are going to get it will be called as the apex position O. In the same fashion we are supposed to complete all the projectors. Now let me complete it and show it to you guys. Now you guys can see that I have completed the uh, mentioning the respective corners and uh, completed all the projectors. Now, according to the rules of visibility, boundary lines are always visible. Let us identify the boundary with A dash to, sorry, D dash to A dash and back to O dash and then followed by C dash and then D dash is going to be the boundary. Okay, so D dash is not connected properly. Now let me connect it. C dash to D dash is going to be the boundary. 
and after which we have to identify whether the base is visible or invisible. When the observer is seeing the object from the front, the base is nearer to the observer when compared to the apex. Henceforth, the base edges are visible edges. Now, that is A to B and B to C is going to be shown as visible edges. Now, in blind method, we can say that if the base is away from the XY line, that base is visible. If the apex is away from the XY line, then the base becomes invisible. It's a blind method. Okay. Now, according to the third point, such of the slant edges either partially or completely passing through the visible base becomes invisible. Now, ABCD is visible. The slant edge O dash B dash is invisible. However, O dash B dash is going to be the visible edge. Now, let me show you how to solve it. Now, O dash to D dash is supposed to be shown as an invisible slant edge because it is partially passing through the visible edge, visible base. Then, O dash B dash is supposed to be the visible, it is passing outside the visible base. And at last, the axis representation has to be shown with respect to the pole position O dash to O1 dash. Now, the, by this, I can say that the problem is completed in all aspects. So now, if you are having any sort of doubts, my contact details are provided here. You can call me at any point of time. And please do like this video subscribe and subscribe to my youtube channel and share this video to all your first year engineering students and once again thanks for watching this video in my youtube channel and keep watching and keep promoting my youtube channel thank you guys thank you once again